done so soon. Uh, Pastor Glenn Oliver was uh, scheduled to be here this morning. And he called me on Friday morning, and I, I could hear he didn't sound well at all. I think he feels pretty good, but his voice is affected and he can hardly talk. And so he asked me if we could switch, and if I could come down this morning, and then, uh, Lord willing, the 24th, I believe Glenn will be here with you instead of this morning. So I said, well, I believe I can do that. Um, and I'm, I'm glad to be with you again this morning and see your smiling faces. And I uh, enjoyed the worship with you, uh, the praise songs, and uh, they're tearjerkers to me. <laughs> And I love the, the hymns of the church. I guess that's partly my generation, uh, being where I am in life at my age. Uh, we grew up on the hymns of the church. And uh, so anyway. And I'm glad this morning to have my wife Elaine with me. And uh, I've, I've been impressed at how many of you already have remembered from two weeks ago when I told you she fell on her shoulder and uh, had a shoulder replacement. And uh, we appreciated your gracious words and uh, encouragements already as we came in this morning. So I'm glad that she could join me. It's, it's only her second day away being released from home care with therapy and nurses and all that goes with that. So we're quite pleased in her recovery and healing that's happening and uh, so we thank you for your prayers for her as well. So we're only uh, two weeks, two Sundays into the new year 2016 and those of us who've been around for a while we remember some of those um, historical landmarks like the year 2000 and Remember way back in, or at least where I grew up in school, they projected ahead to the year 2000. Some very wild projections, um, most of which haven't come to pass, thankfully. Um, but little did we think ahead to 2016 and uh, what that might mean, and here we are. And. Um, we're quite impressed in many ways with technology and uh, what has been learned and put into use and many things to our benefit. I'm not sure about all of it, but many things. We're enjoying the comforts and conveniences and the communications that we have, uh, which we wouldn't have had uh, how many years ago. So we're blessed that way. So and, and a new year is always somewhat uh, refreshing. Uh, new beginnings, I guess, in a sense, even though we're back with the same, same people and same things continue on, and yet there's something about celebrating a new year that uh, has some freshness to it and some uh, reviving within our soul and spirits. And, and for quite a few people, they, they determine, again, beginning of the year to rededicate themselves to God and uh, realizing our failures and our shortcomings uh, many um, in a proper way uh, want to be again renew their covenant and their faithfulness to the Lord uh, Psalm 139 23 and 24 is often used a very classic scripture where David said search me O God and know my heart. He went right to his innermost being. In our culture, I understand in, in some cultures, uh, the heart isn't used for the innermost part of our being. <laughs> Here in the English tradition, uh, that's what we use to express that which is down there in the, in the core of who we are. And David said, uh, search me, O God, and know my heart, my innermost being. Test me and know my anxious thoughts, the things that worry me. Yeah, the things that I lay awake at night and worry about. You ever do that? 
Um, know my anxious thoughts, he said, and see if there is any offensive way in me. How am I offending my brothers and sisters and those that I associate with? How do I come across in a way that just turns people off, as we express it in the English? But more importantly, in what ways do I offend God, my Creator, my Savior? Uh, David was classic scripture to think about for the beginning of the new year. And then he said, lead me in the way everlasting. Take me down that narrow road and through that narrow gate on into the eternity with God. That was his heart's cry. And that's why we say David had a heart after God, his own heart, and a good model for us. And something to think about as we are on the threshold of a new year. Someone said that uh, New Year is like a fresh blanket of snow. Be careful how you tread it, for every mark will show. <laughs> yeah, when you wake up in the morning, there's a fresh blanket of snow out there. Somebody said to me recently, well, the reason I like a good fresh blanket of snow is because then my yard looks as good as the neighbor's yard. <laughs> Rather shallow, but... Um, it's true, everything looks the same. It's white and beautiful and unmarked. You kind of hate to go out there and mess it up. You know, step in it and have tracks, sparkles and glitters, and it looks so beautiful. Well, that's a little bit the way the new year looks to us at the start, but it doesn't take long, does it, until there's marks out there and we leave our own trail and sometimes we wish we could cover it back up, but. Thankfully, God does cover it back up, and God does forgive, and he's gracious, and he's merciful. And I want to just hit a bit on that here this morning as we think about that. So 2016, um, how does that look to you? Are you looking at it by faith or in fear? I, if I caught it right, uh, talking about uh, your homeland and your roots and back into Korea, South Korea and North Korea and the concerns that are in the news, uh, not just there, around the, around the globe, things that are happening uh, to me are encouraging because it's telling us that he's going to be coming back here someday and someday soon and we want to be ready for that. and. Uh, it probably will get worse before it gets better. But uh, it, it's our hope. It's what we are looking for. And, um, and so, as I heard your concerns, we all have those. So, 2016, is it something that's hopeful, doubtful, faith, fear? Are we going into it optimistically or are we going into it pessimistically? <laughs> How are we approaching 2016? And it does depend, doesn't it, who goes with us through that. And uh, Ira Stem Stemfill uh, wrote that gospel song, I don't know about tomorrow. I just live from day to day. I don't borrow from its sunshine because its skies may turn to gray. I don't worry over the future because I know what Jesus said. And so I'm going to walk beside him because he knows what lies ahead. Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand. But I know who holds tomorrow. And I know who holds my hand. And I believe you do too. It's one of the reasons we come together to encourage each other as we see that day approaching. And uh, we don't know anything about Deuteronomy 29.29 29 is my scripture this morning. And my theme, as you noticed in the bulletin, is the things that belong to us. One verse in Deuteronomy 29.29. 29, and um, Deuteronomy is the book that was, uh, the words that were spoken by Moses on the banks of the Jordan just before the Israelites crossed over and went into the promised land and Moses, the man of God, couldn't go along. He had to climb the mountain and breathe his last, and God laid him to rest there. Nobody knows where it was. And, and uh, so before he ascended the mountain, he again repeated 
the law of God to the people of Israel, again, to enforce that in them um, as he would depart from them. And um, so he says this, among many other things in Deuteronomy, this one verse here, the secret things, he said, belong to the Lord our God. But the things revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may follow all the words of this law. 2016, it is all a secret, is it not? Uh, in Proverbs 19:21, it says, Many are the plans in a man and a woman's heart, but it's the Lord's ways that are going to prevail. We make plans. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. James says in James chapter 4, hey, before you declare what you're going to do, it's better if you say, Lord willing, <laughs> I will go and I will do thus and so, because if you don't will it, it's not going to happen. And we're okay with that, are we not? Because we know God is good, gracious, merciful. He wants the best for us always. God is good, God is good all the time, and we repeat that sometimes to each other. And he has proven that to us, and so 2016 is a secret. We don't know anything about it, really. We don't know about the next moment, the next hour, the rest of this day. Why is it so that the secret things belong to the Lord our God? Is that a good thing? Keeping secrets, we say, is not always a good thing, right? Uh, be open. Don't keep secrets. But Moses stresses here that the secret things belong to the Lord our God. And sometimes when we're talking together about, especially about future things, somebody will say, well, God only knows. God only knows because the secret things belong to him. And sometimes I will say, in a, not in a kidding way, but I mean it, God only knows and he won't tell us. <laughs> And the reason he don't tell us is because it's best if we don't know. Um, thinking about that, um, have you ever thought, people, people are curious, and people like to know what's coming. And people go sometimes beyond where they should go to try to find out what is coming. With um, Elaine, my wife's shoulder situation there, I thought about that a number of times. On December 1st of this year, she had her accident, okay? And did what she did to her shoulder. What if on January 1st of 2015, it would have been revealed to her that on December the 1st, down at the end of the year, this is what is going to happen to you. What do you think her year would have been like? Or, you just think with me a moment, what was the most difficult thing that you experienced in 2015? What was the hardest thing that happened, maybe the most painful or whatever in 2015? What was that? Would you want to go through it again? No. But suppose it would not have been a secret to you, and it would have been revealed to you that coming up, this is going to happen. Would that have been a good thing? Now, some people say, well, if I knew it was coming, I would have avoided it. No, because there are these things that are predestined for us to happen to us, and they have their reasons. Even the difficult, suffering, painful things must happen to us. It's part of life. And Paul said in 2 Corinthians 1 that these things happen to us so that we can turn around and go and help somebody else that's going through the same experience. And experience is still the best teacher. When something happens to you, you are much better equipped and qualified to go and help somebody else because you've been there and done that. <laughs> it has happened to you. And so we can't say, if I'd have known it, I'd have changed it. No, because it, it's going, these things need to happen. It would be that you would have known about it and couldn't change it and had to face it. Paul said in, uh, to Timothy that he hasn't given us the spirit of fear, 
but he gave us a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. And if God did not keep some of these things secret, we would live in fear instead of in faith. And instead of in power, we would be weakened by what we know was coming. God is good all the time. He is merciful and gracious. And um, he withholds the things from us that we are not supposed to know. And as a little example, if you turn with me to the end of John's Gospel, and uh, we have Jesus here with his disciples just before he had ascended back up into heaven, the end of John's Gospel, and we have the familiar words of Jesus talking to Peter three times, will you feed my sheep, will you feed my lambs, and and of course, Peter responds, and, and after a while, Peter is concerned about why he keeps asking this. Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? You know that I love you, Lord. And Jesus said the final time, feed my sheep. And then in verse 18, this is what Jesus said to Peter. I tell you the truth, Peter, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted to go. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you to where you do not want to go. Now, it doesn't take long for us to reflect back to our younger, more immature years and know that we kind of did our thing, right? We kind of went where we wanted to go. And with regret, we look back at some of those things we did when we were young. David said, Lord, hold not the sins of my youth to my charge. Uh, when we were young and foolish, we did things, right? We went where we wanted to go. But I hope this morning now we're more mature and we are going even to places where we'd rather not go because God has called us to go there and do it. And I identify with that. I've, I've been called and you've been called to go and just talk to somebody. You didn't want to go and talk to them. You feared it would be a difficult thing and they wouldn't accept you when you had to say some hard things you had to say. And so if we're mature and following him faithfully, he is taking us to places that we would rather not go, but we go anyway in obedience to him. But then Jesus said in verse 19, he said what he said to him to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. And then he said to him, follow me. You notice he gave Peter a clue that there were some difficult days coming ahead of him. Tradition says that Peter was crucified like his Lord was crucified. And not even the same way he requested he be crucified upside down. He wasn't worthy to die in the same way that his Lord died. If Peter would have been told right here at this location that he was going to die that kind of death, that he just witnessed his Lord die, do you think that he would have had a, a, a good, strong ministry experience? He would have been dreading the day probably when that would finally happen. And um, Go back just a couple of chapters, John 16. Jesus is telling his disciples many things. He's out probably in the Mount of Olives there in the, near the Garden of Gethsemane. And he has told them a lot of things like, if the world hates you, keep in mind it hated me. And things like that he was saying to his disciples. Then in verse 12, he says this, I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear more than you can handle. So, the rest is going to be a secret. I'm not going to tell you any more because you couldn't handle it. I've told you enough. That's, that's the mercy of God. The secret things belong to God for our good. And unfortunately today, person, and I think maybe even sometimes Christians, attempt to know more and they go to the horoscopes and they go to mediums and they go to palm readers and they they try to find out through satanic revelation and sometimes some of that might be available but God is saying don't do it don't do it it is more than you can handle you can't bear that now because I love you I don't want you to know 
what's out there. But then he says in verse 29, again in Deuteronomy, that the things that belong to us, the things revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may follow all the words of the law. Now the law to Israel was what Moses given, had given to them, and the children of Israel exclusively were given the law of God. And they had an assignment, they had a challenge to keep that. And they didn't do very well, and I don't think I would have either if I'd have been back in that era. So we're not thinking about the law that's been revealed to us as much as the new covenant now. And this is where we can rejoice and we can go forward in faith because like in Hebrews 10.1, for example, it says that the law was only a shadow of the things that are to come. They're not, it's not the reality. If I would cast a shadow, the shadow is not me, all right? It's not the reality of me, it's just my shadow. The better things were to come yet. The shadow is not the best. The shadow is the real, the, the real thing is, is when Jesus came and went into the Holy of Holies and Hebrews says that the law now that was given, the ceremonial laws that were given and the sacrifices, they have run their course. They're done. There's something better here now. You don't have to do that anymore. He who kept the law is now here with us. And in him now we have forgiveness of our sins. An old hymn that I haven't heard it sung for a long time, I don't know if it's in our books anymore, but free from the law, oh happy condition. Jesus has bled and there is remission. Cursed by the law, bruised by the fall, Christ has redeemed us once and for all. No more need for continual repetitive sacrifices. One time was enough. It was complete. It is finished, he said. Done. It's a done deal. And so we're free from that. That's what has been revealed to us. That's what we want to focus upon. And in 2 Corinthians uh, 3 and uh, verses 6 and following, there are a couple of precious verses where Paul says, He has made us competent as ministers of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, the Spirit gives life. If the ministry that brought death, the law, which was engraved in letters on stone, came with glory, so that the Israelites could not look steadily at the face of Moses as he came off the mountain, his face glowed, and they couldn't even look at him. If that came with glory, fading though it was, will not the ministry of the Spirit that came with Jesus be given even more, be even more glorious? If the ministry that condemns men, the law, is glorious, how much more glorious is the ministry that brings righteousness? For what was glorious has no glory now in comparison with the surpassing glory. And if what was fading away, the law, came with glory, how much greater is the glory of that which lasts? Christ in us, the hope of glory. There's no comparison. Hebrews says a number of times, Jesus is better than Moses, superior to Moses and the law. And that's what has been revealed to us now. The law came by Moses. Grace and truth came by Jesus. In times past, Hebrews says, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he spoke to us by his son. A much better deal has come and has been revealed to us. And that is what we are here in 2016 to look at and to focus upon and go forward in power in the Spirit of God. Well, um, secret things belong to God. Moses told the people there on the bank of the Jordan, secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things that revealed belong to us and to our children forever. How many of you know the prayer of serenity? God grant me the serenity to accept the things I can't change, the courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. 
Pretty important to know the difference between what I can change and what I can't. Stop trying to change things we can't change, right? And let's go on with courage to change the things that we can. Francis of Assisi, I believe, brought that prayer out, and it's, it's a, an incredible prayer, small but powerful. 2016, I'd like to suggest that our prayer might be something like out of this scripture, Lord, grant me the wisdom to know the things that belong to God and are secret, and then the things that belong to us to have the courage to go forward in that strength and with that understanding and not try to keep figuring out what it is that we are not supposed to know and worry about it besides. We know who holds tomorrow and we know who holds our hand and that's what has been revealed to us. I, I keep trying to learn the lesson of going you know, a day at a time and how adequate that is. Living out what's presently occurring in my life using the grace of God that he has given me, appreciating his mercy because he withholds things that I should not know. And I, 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 I want to keep growing and maturing in that approach to life. And again, it's one of my dedications, uh, rededication to 2016. The poet just said it so well when he said, one day when my burden seemed greater than my body and spirit could bear, Weighed down beneath the load, I faltered beneath my sorrow and my care. He said, I cried to the heedless silence as I walked where I could not see. Where is this strength that's promised? Where is this strength for me? And suddenly, from out of the silence, a voice came clear and true. My child, you're trying to carry a burden not meant for you. The thought of the year outstretched before you has darkened the way. The only strength I have promised is the sure strength day by day. So I took one step and I found it quite easy indeed to take. My burden slid from my shoulders and my heart that was ready to break gave thanks that my eyes were opened and my shoulders were eased of their load as I saw. Step by step I was strengthened to walk on the roughest road. May that be your portion in 2016. And along with that, have a happy new year. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you.